Hey what's up guys, today we're going to talk about Shenha, the newest character that came out in patch 2.4, who's a powerful cryo support that I've had tons of fun playing in a few different teams. In this video, I want to cover everything you need to know about this character, going into detail on how to play her and how to build her. On top of that, since she is a new character, I will be commenting on her power level and which teams she fits in, so that you can decide whether or not you want to pull for her. And personally, she's a character who I've had tons of fun testing around with since the second she came out, so that I can finally give you guys all the information you need to build this character efficiently. Before we begin, I want to first First of all, give a special thanks to zjf 77 for helping me test her live as she came out, and I also want you guys to know that I stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested. And with all that being said, let's talk about Shenha. Alright, so the first thing I want to do in this video is talk about Shenha's playstyle and talents, because I've seen a lot of people misunderstanding her kit and not really knowing how to use her and in what teams she can fit. Now I want to start by saying that her general role is being a cryo support who can greatly buff the damage of your team, especially the cryo damage, through her elemental skill and her passive talents that make Shenha excel in certain cryo teams especially because she can buff the damage of your other hyper carries and other cryo characters. In fact, while she has decent scalings on things like her burst, her main source of utility comes from the buffs that she provides. And the first buff that I want to talk about is the one that she gives through her elemental skill. In fact, her elemental skill is an ability that you can press or hold, and it gives you an okay amount of cryo particles, while once again dealing an okay amount of damage. While neither of these are particularly amazing compared to some other characters, the part of her skill that actually makes it quite nice is this damage bonus that's given on her attack. When you use this ability, there will be these icy quills that Shenha will generate for your characters, increasing their crowd damage when they do basically anything. In fact, when they do pretty much any attack, being a normal attack, charge attack, plunge attack, or even use an elemental skill or burst, and deal crowd damage through those, Shenha will increase that damage based on her current attack. A few important properties to know though is that this buff lasts a certain amount of time. As you can see, it's 10 seconds when you press, 15 seconds when you hold, or a certain amount of hits that each character that gets buffed can deal, and this is the more relevant one as typically you're going to use up all of the hits that she gives you, which is 5 when you press or 7 when you hold. To not overcomplicate things, what this means is you will have a certain amount of hits on every single character that will be buffed. For example, 5 hits of Ayaka's burst will get buffed when you use your skill, but an important thing to know about this is that it buffs every single party member when they deal crowd damage. Because of that, in teams that have multiple cryo units, or even characters like Kazuha or Venti who can infuse abilities with cryo, so infusing Kazuha's burst with cryo for example, these are teams where Shenha shines as she will buff more than one character. In terms of how good the buff is, honestly it's pretty good but it doesn't last that long. Only buffing 5 hits when you press or 7 when you hold isn't that many hits especially in AoE. However, there are a few ways to make this better. There are ways to use it to where you can get more than this 5 or 7 quills in one rotation. Now I'll mainly cover this more in the advanced tip section a bit later in the video because it is a bit more advanced. The summary of it is your buff, your quills apply instantly to any ability. So if you use one at the start of your rotation and have it like stocked up and then use something like a Rosaria or an Ayaka burst, and then swap back to your Shenha while that burst is on field, you can use your skill another time, basically doubling the amount of quills that you used for one burst. The way this works is basically exploiting the low cooldown when you press, and like building your rotation around it, but once again we will talk about that more a bit later in the video. I do want to say however that this is one of the reasons why I usually recommend pressing this ability over holding it, and while there are some advantages for hold that we'll talk about shortly, generally a 10 second cooldown makes your rotations a lot easier, and will be more favorable. In fact, regarding her passive talents, which are honestly kind of underrated, they are both passives that greatly buff your character when you do certain things. Your first one will give 15% crowd damage bonus to any character inside of your burst when you use it, which is quite nice, and then your second passive talent gives you even more buffs when you use your skill. Effectively, when you press it, it will give you elemental skill and burst damage to all your party members, 15% for 10 seconds, and if you hold it, you will instead gain 15% normal charge and plunge attack damage for 15 seconds. Lastly, regarding her burst that I didn't even mention yet, this also decreases resistance of enemies and will deal some AoE cryo damage. When you use this burst, it will decrease the cryo and physical res by a okay amount. The exact amount actually scales on your level, it's around 10 to 15%, and it does a decent damage over time. I do want to say though that her energy cost is quite high, being 80, to where you do need 
a decent amount of energy recharge to spend this on cooldown, something you really want to do, especially because of your passive talent that gives you crowd damage bonus. Also, regarding your talent priority, since I typically tend to run Shenha as a buffer to increase your team's damage, leveling your elemental skill, which will increase the damage bonus you gain from your attack percent, is going to be your number one priority, and then leveling your burst afterwards. Also, since Shenha is a new unit, I do want to specify my opinion on her right now. While this is subject to change, as again, she is quite new, I do believe that while her scalings aren't as high as some other cryo characters, other cryo 5 stars, especially regarding her burst's overall damage, her personal damage from her skill, and even the particles she generates being lower than characters like Kaya or Rosaria, she does make up for this, in my opinion, from the buffs she provides to other characters, especially if you use her efficiently, which I'll give more advanced info about a bit later in the video. Optimizing her damage bonus to all your other characters, like once again Ayaka, Kazuha, and other cryo units, gives her a niche role where she can fit cryo and freeze teams quite efficiently. I do want to point out though that Shenha, while she is a character you can fit in quite a few teams that I'll talk about later in the video, she's not someone I want to overhype, as while she is a good cryo support, there are obviously other cryo supports that you can use if you don't have her, like Kaya, Rosaria, and so on. And so I do believe that Shenha is a quite balanced unit that you can be happy to use if you have her, but you shouldn't feel forced to pull for. On top of that, just my personal opinion and experience with her, while initially when I first started testing her, I was a bit underwhelmed with her personal damage, the more I started to optimize her rotations and play her, especially in like an Ayaka team, the more I started to realize that buffing your team's damage is actually quite nice, making me like her more and more. All right, now with that out of the way, let's talk about Shenha's weapons and how to gear her efficiently. In fact, the first weapon I want to talk about is one of my favorites for her, which is the Favonius Lance. While there are some five-star weapons that can be better for her that I will cover shortly, I do want to point out that a Favonius Lance, especially with refinement, is absolutely insane on Shenha. The reason for this is because, number one, it has a very high base attack, number two, it gives you energy recharge on the stat, which she really needs, and number three, the effect is kind of broken. As long as you have enough crit rate to proc the passive, which you can get through your artifacts, especially your substats at high investment, what this effect does is generate white particles, which give a lot of energy to not only the active character, but also your entire team. Having that with an energy-hungry character like Shenha, and other cryo characters that you typically run her with, especially when you think of pairing her with someone like Ayaka, who can definitely use the extra particles, because typically her energy generation isn't as high as some other cryo characters, like a Kaya, Rosaria, or Diona that Shenha is typically replacing in a cryo team. Because of that, I really like Favonius Lance as definitely the best 4-star weapon, and also being competitive with a lot of the 5-stars depending on what you need. With that being said, obviously some other weapons, mainly 5-stars, can be amazing for her. The Calamity Queller and the Engulfing Lightning are both really good 5-star options. The Engulfing Lightning is great because she wants quite a bit of energy recharge, and I'll talk about the exact amount in the artifact section, but this weapon will give her quite a bit and then convert it into attack percent as well, giving you both energy recharge and attack, which are greatly needed for Shenha. On top of that, the Calamity Queller has an insanely high base attack and then also has a really good effect, which gives you elemental damage bonus and then just an insane amount of attack that stacks over time, and then the attack bonus will double when you're off field. And so for the 5 stars, these are the two that I can recommend the most. I do also want to mention though that basically all the other 5 star spears can be quite good. The Vortex Vanquisher gives you a ton of attack, although you do have to spend some time on field with her. The Skyward Spine gives you a good amount of energy recharge and quite high base attack as well. And obviously Staff of Homa and Jade Wing Spear, while they're not her best options, do just have a good amount of like attack and stats that she can use. With that being said though, some of these 5 star weapons that aren't as synergistic with her are not weapons that I would pick over something like a Favonius Lance, especially if you need that energy that it provides your whole team. Lastly, for other 4 star weapons, in case you don't have a Favonius or any of the other weapons that I mentioned, the catch can be quite decent for the energy recharge and the damage, although it's usually better used on other characters like Shang Ling, and weapons like the Lithic Spear or the Wave Breaker Fin can also give you a lot of attack percent, making them a good option as well. Lastly, I do want to point out that the Kitain Spear can be a viable free-to-play option if you don't have any of the other spears that I mentioned, but it obviously isn't as good. Overall though, I do want to emphasize that the right weapon for you can depend, which is why I named so many good options, with Calamity Queller and Engulfing being the best 5 stars, and Favonius being the best 4 star, as the effect of this weapon, especially with enough crit rate and high refinement, is quite good. Now regarding Shenha's artifacts, there's actually quite a few good options. The first thing I want to say though is, for some reason, the Noblesse set has been getting a bad rep on Shenha. That being said, if you're not running another Noblesse user on your team, someone who can use it efficiently like Diona or Bennett, it can actually be a really good option for Shenha, especially in some freeze teams that really want attack. In fact, this 4-piece will not only give you 20% burst damage from the initial 2-piece, but it will also give you 20% attack to all your party members for 12 seconds when you use your burst. The reason this is so nice is because it buffs every single party member regardless of their element. While some of Shenha's buffs mainly affect cryo users, this can buff all of your party members and can allow you to just get more overall team damage. Because 
because of that, it's apparent that the 4-piece Noblesse Oblige is a very good and viable option for Shenha if you don't have a Noblesse user on your team, which is why I tend to recommend it. That being said, there's quite a few teams where you're already going to have a Noblesse user, and so Shenha does have honestly many sets that can fit her other than just this one. In fact, a very popular one, probably the most popular one going around right now, that is a very good alternative, is the 2-piece Gladiator with the 2-piece Reminiscence, both of which giving you 18% attack. This is very good because Shenha wants attack percent to buff her team, so these two pieces are great for her. Now I do also want to point out though that if you need energy recharge and are lacking some on your artifacts, the two-piece Emblem of Severed Fate is also very good as this gives you 20% energy recharge, being the equivalent of around 3-4 to four substats. Lastly, while it's not my favorite overall, I do want to point out that to maximize your Shenha's personal damage in a freeze team, the four-piece Blizzard Strayer can be nice as it gives you a ton of crit rate and some cryo damage, although it's not typically what I recommend compared to the other sets that will provide you with a much greater team buff overall. Next up, regarding the stats you want on Shenha, it's pretty straightforward. The first thing you want is enough energy recharge to spam your burst on cooldown so that there's no real downtime with it, enabling you to buff your team as much as possible. As always, the exact amount you need is highly variable depending on the team you're running, how many other cryo characters are in it, and also your weapon. For example, running a Favonius Lance can greatly assist your Shenha in getting her burst back because of it not only giving you energy recharge, but also giving you more particles through its effect. With that being said, a general rule for how much energy recharge you need is typically around 165 to like 190, once again, depending on your team and rotation. I do recommend you test out how much energy recharge you personally need and then go from there. Other than that though, you typically want to build attack percent on Shenha for the other stats to just maximize how much damage you're giving to your entire team. While other subsets like crit rate and crit damage can be quite nice, especially crit rate to proc your Favonius passive if you choose to run that weapon, attack percent is typically going to be the main one you're looking for as a pretty good one to have on Shenha. Now for the main stats you're looking for, it's pretty straightforward. You typically want attack percent on pretty much everything. And so for your sands, attack percent is generally the way to go. But if you need more energy recharge, if you don't have enough, you can also go for an energy recharge sands as this will give you over 50%. For your goblet, a general build is to typically go attack percent. This is really good for a support Shenha, will also give you some damage and greatly increase your team's overall damage through your icy quills. While I do feel like I have to point out that cryo goblet can be viable for your Shenha's personal damage, it's not typically what I recommend as attack percent goblet is much more universal and will make her a better support to increase your team's overall damage. Similarly with your circlet, attack percent once again is the general option for the same reasons as the other pieces. With that being said, crit circlets, especially if you have like attack percent on the substats or a lot of attack percent from other sources can also be viable. Crit rate in particular if you're running the Favonius Lance and need more crit rate on a main stat can also make it a viable option once again for your damage and depending on your weapon. Now moving on to Shenha's constellations, there's a few that I want to talk about but overall she isn't dependent on them as they're not the biggest upgrades compared to some other characters. With that being said, some of her first ones are actually quite good. Her first constellation allows her to use her skill another time, which is nice in a few ways. First of all, it allows you to get more particles, more energy from using two skills. And second of all, in certain teams, it allows you to get both passives of your ascension, both increasing your skill and burst damage and also your normal charge and plunge attacks. Another thing I wanted to mention though, a misconception that I've heard other theory crafters talk about since I obviously obviously can't test it, is that you can't actually get more stacks of your quills from your skill through this constellation. What that means is if you use your skill twice, let's say you like hold it twice, you won't get 14 quills, but instead only 7, so you kind of have to still space them out, or use it once while let's say Ayaka's burst is spinning, and then use it again after you consume the initial stacks. Overall though, gaining more particles and more damage from your passive if you can use both of them, makes this constellation quite nice. For your second one, you gain more cryo crit damage when you're inside your burst, any active character will gain 15% of it when they're inside of the field that your burst creates, and it also makes your burst last for 6 seconds more, which is honestly quite good. Other than this constellation, there's not too many others that I'm passionate about or that I want to talk about for too long. Her third constellation increases her skills talent, which is honestly pretty good, giving you more attack percent scaling to your whole team. Her fifth one increases her burst damage, which is whatever. And then her fourth and sixth are kind of niche, I guess. Her fourth one gives you more damage to your skill, your Shenha's own skill. And if you're building your Shenha damage, then this is nice. But if not, the damage bonus you gain from this long paragraph of a constellation, while it is a considerable increase to your skill's damage, it's typically not why you're running Shenha anyways. Now I do want to point out though that this gets more useful with your 6th constellation, but as a standalone C4, it's not that great. And lastly, for your 6th constellation, it's a kind of niche one that makes normal and charge attacks from any character not trigger your icy quills, not use up the stacks 
from your skill. And this seems pretty OP for teams like a Ganyu charge attack comp where you're running Shenhao with her and even having potential with other crowd characters like Ayaka charge attacking or Chongyun. Realistically though, her best ones are basically her first two in general, although she isn't really dependent on them and they're not the biggest increases to where you don't really need any constellations, but there are a few that can be decent options. Moving on for a few a bit more advanced tips that I want to point out with Shenha to maximize your rotation and overall utility that this character will provide. The first thing I want to point out is that in certain teams like an Ayaka team, you are going to want to use your burst before your skill. The reason for this is because your skill has a 10 second cooldown when you press it and will buff every single crowd character. The thing you need to know with this though is that since it only lasts for 10 seconds and you want to do an optimal rotation swapping into literally every character, for example going into Kazuo using his skill and his burst, then your Hydro character and then your Ayaka, you want to not only make sure that these quills last long enough for all your characters, but you can also manage to buff certain characters twice. What I mean by this is in a rotation, if you use your burst and then your skill, swap through all your characters, and then go back to Shenha and immediately use your skill again, since these buffs are applied instantly as you use them and sort of override snapshotting, you can effectively get 10 quills instead of 5 in one rotation by just using Shenha's skill at the start and end of your rotation with, for example, an Ayaka or Rosaria burst. Also very quickly what I wanted to show, because people ask this a lot, is my Ayaka damage with and without Shenha. The first thing I'm going to do is just a standard using my burst uh, without Shenha. So I'm going to dash into him, swirl the cryo, freeze and give this thrilling tails buff to my Ayaka and then use my burst. And as you'll see, it's doing about 18,000 on the one to the right. Ignore the left one because I didn't really set up, but around 18,000. Now, if I were to reset and use my Shenha this time, you'll see that the buff damage of my Ayaka's burst will actually be significant. Do keep in mind that my Shenha is on for Noblesse Oblige though, as this team doesn't have a Noblesse user, so it's very good for Shenha to be on that set. Now, with that being said, let's do a similar rotation, but with Shenha this time. So I'm gonna use Shenha's burst and E at the start, so I can get two E's in in one rotation, uh, then use Kazuo's E. I'm not gonna use his burst just for simplicity. Apply Hydro, give throwing kills to my Ayaka, dash into him and use my burst. And you'll see it's doing about 35,000, then 23 when it's not buffed, and then back to 35-ish when it is buffed. So around 24,000 on the non-quilled hits and around 34, 35 on the quilled ones. And so as you can see, it's honestly really good for this team to run Shenhao with Ayaka. With all that out of the way, let's now talk about Shenhao's teams. Through my testing, the main team that I really liked for Shenha is a freeze team with Ayaka. While freeze teams in general can work with her and she can just be a pretty good crowd support in a freeze team in general, the reason why she works so well with Ayaka is because of the way her passives and her skill synergizes with her. Being able to effectively give 10 stacks of your E to Ayaka's burst if you use it twice in a rotation, as well as increasing your burst damage all from Shenha's passives is actually really good for this team. On top of that, you're also going to be buffing someone like Kazuha's Cryo Infusion if you do choose to run Kazuha, which makes Shenha honestly a really good pick for this team in a proper rotation. I do however want to point out that you don't need a 5-star team like I'm showing here. Obviously, the Hydro Applier can be a 4-star as there are many Hydro users that work, and same with the Animo user, you can run someone like Sucrose. Lastly, in this specific team, your Shenha gets to buff your team with Noblesse Oblige as well, and allow your Kokomi to also run the Millilith set and a Thrilling Tales, allowing you to give your team, and especially your Ayaka, an insane amount of attack. The next team I want to talk about is some Mono Cryo teams with Shenha. The first thing I want to say is that these are very powerful because of Shenha's ability to buff all the characters' damage, all the characters' Cryo damage, because she gives quills to every single character in your party, also reduces Cryo resistance, and just gives you a nice amount of bonus damage. And so this team can definitely be good against enemies, for example, that can't be frozen and can be good depending on the content. And also this team is quite flexible. Obviously you can run other Animo units or other cryo characters, depending on who you have and what you want to run. I do want to say, however, that my main issue with this team is that you're typically taking a freeze team that would run a hydro character here and removing the hydro character for a third cryo unit. While this is better against enemies that can't be frozen, in general, you do lose out on the four piece Blizzard Strayer set, which is arguably the best set in the game, giving you 40% crit rate, paired with the fact that the freeze reaction is just broken in general. That is why personally I prefer freeze teams and prefer a team like this one where you're running Ayaka with Shenha if you do have them, but I do still want to say that Mono Krau teams can work because of Shenha buffing every single character in this team. Also something I wanted to add is regarding Shenha's place in a Eula team, while I don't recommend pulling for Shenha specifically for Eula, as there are a lot of different options that you can run, for example Beidou teams, Raiden, Rosaria, Kaya, and so on, Shenha can be a viable cryo 
Eula's support as she reduces physical resistance and can buff your Eula's damage. That being said, other cryo supports can give you more particles, and there is still some testing to be done on Shenha's rotation with Eula, especially because of how tight it is, because you only have 10 seconds of burst damage buff when you use your skill. But overall, it seems like they are a viable pair with one another without being the strongest one. Now, there are also some other teams Shenha can work in, for example, a reverse melt team. While Shenha isn't necessarily the best option here, as she'll generate less particles in a quick swap style team than someone like Kaya, who will generate, you know, more particles, also has good scalings. Personally, while Shenha is not my favorite option for this team compared to some other crowd characters, she can definitely work. And so if you want to use her because you like her in a team like this, it can be viable. Also, a lot of people have been asking me regarding Shenha's synergy with Ganyu, and there's a lot of questions regarding whether they can work with one another. Personally, through my experience, I found that Ganyu can work with Shenha, but mainly in like a mono cryo team that we've talked about earlier with Ganyu as one of the crowd characters. But for Ganyu's other teams, it can be kind of iffy. First of all, regarding Melt Ganyu with Shenha, I really don't like it that much because if you're replacing your shield character, then number one, it's very annoying for a Melt team since you want to be charge shotting to where if you don't have a shield, especially in Heart Abyss floors, you can get interrupted. On top of that, if you use Shenha's burst that applies cryo at a decent rate inside of a Ganyu Melt team, she can quite easily steal some of the melts, which can be problematic. Lastly, regarding a Ganyu Freeze team, while Shenha can work in place of someone like like Rosaria. It can be hard to fit her in because if you're replacing Diona, then you lose a shielder and healing, but she can be a viable option, especially if you have a hydro healer like Kokomi, allowing you to run a flex crowd user, although Shenha isn't my go-to for this team. Overall, to summarize my thoughts, I want to say that Shenha has many teams where she can be a viable cryo support, with a few where she shines more than others, being one mono cryo teams, and obviously Ayaka Freeze being her best one, given the insane amount of damage that she adds to someone like Ayaka's burst, and your Kazuo if you choose to run him. With that being said, I'm now going to do a showcase of this team right now. It's not a max investment team by any means, but I assure you the clear will be very good because of the synergy that this team has with one another. I do want to point out that my Shenha is on a four piece Noblesse Oblige, so while she is a bit lower attack than some other Shenhas, she makes up for it with the four piece Noblesse, buffing all my party members, and she's also on a four star weapon at C0, so this should be a somewhat realistic showcase. And so with that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed the guide, and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go. And so overall, my thoughts on Shenha are that she is quite niche, but really good in her niche, especially in Ayaka teams or Mono Cryo teams, if you want to play that as well, and then can also be a viable option in some other teams. So having some teams where she shines and others where she's just viable, I think is a good uh, balanced unit for the game that I personally really enjoy because of her design and play style. With that being said, I apologize for the delay in this video. It took me longer than most of my guides because I really wanted to make sure everything was accurate and do all the testing that I could before uploading this and also editing took forever. With that being said, Said, since Shenta is a new character, if there's anything I want to add, as always, it will be in a pinned comment, so be sure to check that. And I hope I did a good job at clarifying her kit, but feel free to ask any questions you may have in the comments down below. With that being said, if this guide was helpful, feel free to like and sub if you're new. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.